Okay, so planning to make my tester. And I have this box here that I will put it in. Got a switch. I have some jumper cables. And first thing I want to do is really look at how I'm going to put the coil inside here. And I have a plan to do that with putting something like that, this piece of plastic on the bottom, or plexiglass, and then I'll have to cut out some little screw points on there. And then I'll hold it together with these long, uh, I think they're three inch screws. So, first order of business will be putting together this so that it fits around the coil. There's a little bit of space to put some contacts in there. I have some contacts I need to clean up. They came out of a coil box. So here's the contacts I'll be using. One on the bottom, two on the sides. So that's basically gonna be my starting point. Okay, so I got the thing put together. There's three long screws and then I hooked in those little uh, electrical terminals. Let's see how it works. Right. Just in. Slide them in. The coil fits in there. Terminals touching on the bottom. Two side. Okay, here's a demonstration of the coil in. Looks like it's sitting in there okay. Now I want to mount the switch. I have an on and on switch The reason with the off in the center. The idea here is I want to be able to run two different powers in. Okay, so I got this piece of metal, cut it out of scrap metal off the computer. And I'm going to place it in the box here. I'm going to put the switch through it. I'll put a nylon standoff on top of it. And then I'm going to mount the circuit. Okay, so I went ahead and mounted the nylon screws on there, the standoffs, I can put the circuit board on here, and then I'm going to get the switch in here, and just tighten it on just to do a, see how the fit is. But it looks like this will all fit in here nicely. I put the nylon standoffs just so that the bottom of the circuit board doesn't get shorted out. Of course, I need to put some nuts on top there. But this obviously fits under here fine. The coil will fit in here. Okay, so I drilled a couple more holes. I wanted to put the push button up on the top, and then I also wanted to have a way of having multiple batteries, because I have a switch that's actually a, a three position. So I will have 12 volt, and then I'll have this RC car battery, which is about 7.5. Okay, here it is, finally all put together. I have it set up where it has a switch where it can either go from the small uh, battery, remote control battery, uh, to this larger 12 volt lead battery. And I can go either way. So the lead battery is 8.8 .8 volts, and the other one is about 8 volts. Uh, that gives me option of testing at two different voltages. For some reason, the 
eight volt battery. Uh, it may be the wires or something are not giving me the type of waveform I want. Anyways, that's basically it. work I put in is finally working um, I can test it in that single fire test or I can test it where it's continuously firing and there's one more test where it tests for about 50 times and gives the readings there so uh, there's also the capacitor test and in this case, I didn't put another switch out here. I just have to flip the switch there and open the contacts at the same time I do the test. And it looks like it's a good capacitor. It's actually a new capacitor, so it should be good. And also, if, if I wanted to, I could change the speed of that multiple fire test by sticking a uh, screwdriver and turning that. Okay. Well. This is it.